Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go around. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, we're going to take a look at a new off-grid knife. Uh, we'll take a look at a new kombu design that's in the state, uh, that's in Life Knife News. And then we'll look at the blades of spring break. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the blades of spring break. I'm just back from a road trip with the family. It was half road, half train. It was a great trip. And um, there were some trials and tribulations and a knife lost that actually broke my heart. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, but we all returned sick. And uh, least uh, of all myself. And it just brings to mind uh, one of my favorite lines from my absolute favorite movie, Chinatown, and that is summer colds are the worst. And though it's not summer, it feels like summer. It's uh, like spring and hope springs eternal. I think I'm getting an ear infection like I'm seven years old. So uh, if I start to shout, please just uh, bear with me. OK, so let me tell you what I'm carrying today. Today's pocket check. A new knife, something that I'm really thrilled with that I've been carrying quite a lot that uh, took me a while to get. And that is this little beauty here. Actually, it's not so little. This is a biggish knife. This is the new uh, Microtech SOCOM Bravo. The SOCOM Bravo was a model based on the SOCOM Elite uh, made by uh, Marfion Custom Knives and also uh, Microtech in their factory uh, in North Carolina. And it's a very complex build, much more so than the very... Um, uh, well, luxurious, but utilitarian elite line, uh, which is an extremely capable folding combat and uh, tactical and EDC knife. Well, this was the done up version, you know, uh, did up with uh, carbon fiber and titanium, different exotic materials, uh, fluting in the blades and handles. Well, it was getting to be too much for their manufacturing here in the States. So they contracted the work out to Reich Knife. A highly, highly respected uh, Chinese manufacturer of very limited production runs of pretty exotic and uh, super machined knives. Um, Reich Knife has done an amazing job on this knife. Uh, I'm really, really thrilled uh, with this. And something uh, I'm finding interesting the longer I carry this, uh, there's definitely a difference in feel between this and the Elite. Uh, not only is the clip in the right spot here, uh, the Elite always has it uh, uh, tipped down, and it's one of the two knives, uh, to include the military by Spyderco, where I've always forgiven the tip down only thing. Uh, this knife has the uh, clip in the back, which uh, alters the grip. Also, there's no weight reduction in these titanium liners, uh, so it has a more handle-heavy feel whereas the Elite has a more blade-heavy feel uh, due to the aluminum handle and the big, heavy blade. So I'm very, very excited about this knife. I'm going to keep carrying it. Uh, originally, I wanted the Tonto version of it, but then I realized in the 11th hour, I already have the um, Elite in the Tonto, so I decided to get this uh, clip point. Glad I did. So I've been carrying that one quite a bit. Uh, I'm wearing shorts this week after work, and... Uh, uh, carrying this in shorts depends on the shorts. If they're light kind of, uh, uh, hiking shorts, it's, it's a little much, but in, um, well, uh, like khakis or something like that, not too bad. I've never minded weight too much. All right. Next up, my fixed blade knife today is a modern classic, uh, something I've been carrying ever since I got it quite a bit. This is the JB knife and tool ditch pick, just a beautiful, uh, Pical style knife. I, I think it looks beautiful in the sheath. That's why I'm showing it off in the sheath. Also, we have that discreet carry concepts clip. Just a great, great clip. Uh, I wear this in the waistband, three o'clock, and when it's drawn, it's in this reverse grip, the intended grip uh, for this knife. The original version of this knife uh, did not have the front edge sharpened, but on this run, he was offering it this way, and I believe. Uh, uh, evermore, you can get it with the sharpened front, or you can get it half sharpened on the front, which is kind of cool, sort of a bayonet thing. But I decided why not go full Monty with it? I'd, I'd regret it if I didn't. 
so I did. And the ditch on all of their models, when you see ditch as a pre prefix to the rest of the name, that refers to this ultra thin blade steel, very flexible, very tough, um, but also very thin. So very light to carry and will slip between the atoms uh, through which you push it. Uh, amazing knife, very happy to have this thing and always have my eye on what they're what they're putting out. By the way, they have some knuckles recently that were pretty cool. Something kind of like these um, McNeese knuckles, except uh, in a G10 with a with an inner layer of metal. Pretty cool looking. Uh, last up on me is uh, it's been hard to shake this from my pocket. This is the Jack Wolf Knives Sharpshooter. I believe he has almost sold out. I think he's like 98 percent sold out. Sold out. He meaning Ben. Uh, Belkin, the man who started the company Jack Wolf Knives, making modern interpretations of classic slip joint knives produced to the absolute highest level. And this guy is a stickler. And he's got, uh, Ben that is, he's got an incredible collection himself of custom handmade slip joints. He knows what he likes in slip joints and he's had it all distilled into this and all the folders coming uh, for the next six months or so. He's got a bunch in the offing. He's going to do monthly releases. And these things are beautifully produced, and he is contractually bound not to say where. Um, so I don't know where, but it's the best company in China for making slip joints, it seems, because this thing uh, exceeds all expectations. Plus, it is very, very thinly, not plus, I should say, uh, one of those things that exceeds expectations is the blade grind. It is so wickedly thinly ground and full height hollowly ground. Uh, I'm sure I didn't say that right, but it's a full height hollow grind. And it comes to a super thin uh, edge with a nice big sharpening choil. You could sharpen that thing for quite a while and move that edge north and still have a very thin behind the edge um, uh, geometry there. Not that you would need to, uh, because this is not a hard use knife. This is a slip joint pocket knife, and that's M390 blade steel. Frankly, I will never have to sharpen this. I will, if if anything, only strop it, and probably only out of just the pleasure of stropping it, uh, because that is very sharp M390 steel. I'm not going to do anything crazy with that blade, and so the only thing I can think is if I'm I'm trying to go through a tough bagel, and I'm and, and I push down and it lands on a porcelain plate, maybe I'll have to. Uh, take that out with a little uh, rod or something, ceramic rod. Other than that, I, I say it's bulletproof. You know, that's that's the kind of blade steel. That's, I think, the most valuable place for a blade steel like M390, a small knife, a small pocket knife, something that you carry a lot and that you're going to use, you know, to do little tasks. Uh, that way you never have to sharpen it. You can always go with the factory edge because it's probably never going to actually dull if all you're doing is uh, opening, well, after a while, it will. But you get my point, I am sure. So that's what I'm carrying. What are you carrying? I had the Microtech SOCOM Bravo, the JB Knife and Tool Ditch Pick, and the uh, um, uh, 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 Jack Wolf Knives Sharpshooter. So I got to tell you a little story uh, before I move on, and it, it really bums me out. Uh, but before I get to that, I have to let you know, I've been reading the Reacher book, uh, the, the very first in the Jack Reacher series, because I watched the Amazon and my dad, the Amazon series. My dad has always been into Jack Reacher as a sort of palate cleansing book between history books. He loves to read history books, uh, but then he likes to read Jack Reacher between them. And he's always been saying, Bob, you got to check out Jack Reacher. He's so cool. He's a big dude. He just watched He's just minding his own business, roaming the country, and people just, you know, they just mess with him. And he loves how he fights and everything. So I started uh, reading the book, and it's excellent. I really, really dig it, and I look forward to reading other, other Jack Reacher books after that. But there was one scene in the Jack Reacher book, in this Reacher book, that just rang hollow. And he goes into someone's car and goes through the glove box and finds a switchblade with the, the owner's name inscribed in it. All good. Ebony handle, all good. Uh, describes it like a an Italian switchblade. All good. I like it. Up until the point he said it had a seven-inch double-edged blade. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Seven-inch double-edged blade. That means an eight-inch handle. 
That means a 15 inch overall blade. That's larger than the Espada XL from Cold Steel. And he pops it in his pocket. How is this possible? How is any of this possible, Lee Child? Uh, I, 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 uh, I, I protest. Je protest. Uh, what, what is going on here? Uh, so I think maybe that was just a typo. Maybe he wasn't thinking. Maybe he was thinking seven inches overall, in which case it's sort of a small blade for a guy of the stature of Jack Reacher. So I need some questions answered, uh, answered from Mr. Child here. I know the book is uh, 25 years old, but uh, you still have some things to answer for, sir. All right, moving on. The next tragedy in, in our awesome vacation. No, there was no tragedy on our vacation. Just... Just me being dumb. Oh, I hate it when I'm dumb. And, you know, uh, it happens maybe with some regularity to the point where I can um, say it's coincidence. But in this case, uh, I've just done this so many times and I don't know what my problem is. I lost another knife due to a security check. OK, we went to a theme park here in the States uh, in, in we went to Universal Studios. I'll say it. And it was awesome. I really enjoyed it. However, on day two, okay, day one, I walked in accidentally with my Bastinelli diagnostic on the back of my work ID, which I had buried in my backpack, which I swear to God, I had gone through stem to stern so thoroughly, and I missed it. I missed it the first day, and so did security. The second day, I had someone who was awake, and they caught it. This happened last year at Legoland. I don't know if you remember this, but it was in the reverse order. First day, I forgot. But in this case, uh, there was no getting back on the bus. I was not going back another half hour. So I was like, I'll do the, the classic stash. It's what I used to do when I lived in New York City. And I went to a museum or something. I'd find a little potting, potter and just kind of dig it, dig a little hole and bury it in there. Well, I did that with my Bastinelli diagnostic. My wife is just like, God, we were so on time for a change today. And here you go, bringing this thing in. I'm like, I didn't know. I didn't know like like it's someone else's fault. So I run out uh, back through security um, and, uh, you know, the guy's like, you got two choices. You can throw it out or you can throw it out. You can throw it out or you can give it to me. So I take it uh, down to a potter. I bury it all day long. I'm like, can't forget where it is. I I mapped out the potter with a couple of photographs, wrote a couple of notes. And at the end of the day, I came back and it was gone. It was gone. Someone was either watching me and dug it out but probably more likely um and that, that's actually likely someone saw me do it but 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 more than likely there was a crowd of people waiting for a shuttle bus and some kid was like playing in the dirt because you see a lot of kids playing in the dirt and laying on the ground uh at these theme parks and uh maybe the kid was digging through the dirt and found the the diagnostic and held it up to his mom and his mom's like give me that you know um Something similar to that happened when I was a kid. Uh, but in any case, uh, I hope whoever wound up with my Bastinelli diagnostic, I hope you really need it. Uh, or I hope you don't really need it, but I hope it comes in handy. I don't know what to say. Uh, it was my fault. Uh, so my blessings on to you. Usually, like when I know a knife has been stolen, that has happened a few times uh, out of my car and other places. I'm like, I hope they fall on it. Uh, but in this case, I hope they need it because it was my own dumb fault for losing it all right well if you want to help me get a new bastinelli diagnostic you can do so by supporting the show on patreon we have three levels of support there and you get uh, interview extras you get stickers you get other stuff and um in return uh, especially uh, one of the funnest things is the monthly knife giveaway for the gentleman junkies that's the ten dollar high tier of support uh, so check it out. You can you can uh, zap the QR code right here because we are very contemporary. Or you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and check it out. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Looking for a new knife? How about one from Benchmade, Spyderco, Wii, or Bark River? Get that new knife and support the Knife Junkie channel and save money on a new knife all at the same time. Visit our Knives for Sale page at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives for this week's specials. Through our affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on great knives. You save some money on your knife purchase, and the Knife Junkie channel makes a small commission, it's a win-win. Check out the new knife specials each and every week at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives.
You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. We were all a little bit um, suspicious, hesitant, uh, probably neither of those are the spurious. I'm not sure what the right word is, but when GSM bought Cold Steel a couple of years back, it was like, ooh, what's going to happen? And they did a couple of things that made my spidey senses tingle, but but we all benefited from. Like, what model do you want us to bring back? And they they got but they brought back the Talwar Talwar XL, which I still have not picked up. I need to do that. I still need one of those for my collection. But we were all concerned: are they going to go cheese? Uh, and some might think that Cold Steel has always been cheese, and I guess I get that. But to me, they're they're heroes of the knife industry, and I love them. Uh, but they have a new fixed blade line out, and. I'm not thrilled. I got to say, I'm not thrilled. I'll be 100% honest. Uh, you know, I'm a cold steel lover, or maybe that's not the right word. Fanboy. I hate that term. I'm just a cold steel devotee uh, since high school. Uh, and that was a long time ago. They've come out with this line, the razor tech, uh, interesting profile. I can get behind the profile. Uh, it's got a recurve and a deep belly, except for the small four inch version. That's a six and a half, a five and a four inch version of the razor tech. Uh, okay, so you either like the profile or you don't. The, the five and the six and a half inch are, you know, look chopping heavy. These are tactical blades. They have, you know, knowing cold steel, they have pretty good points to deal with, but uh, mostly slashing and chopping I'm seeing from this uh, blade type. The price, okay, and that's a matter of taste or uh, taste if you're a collector or usage type if you're a user and you want to. Uh, get a fixed blade knife for adventure or whatever uh, or camping or something like that. But the the problem is when we run into the materials. Now, those molded slabs are GRN, eh, GRN, that's glass filled, you know, nylon. And then the blade steel, the blade steel is 4116 Krupp. 4116 Krupp Stahl. Uh, Krupp's is a great steel maker from Germany. Uh, but the 4116 is stuff they were using on their budget line knives, you know, years ago. Uh, my roach belly is 4116. Uh, I believe my Kiridashi, that's something else. That's another, that's a different uh, uh, budget steel. But the 4116 is on the Spike series. It's on a number of their inexpensive knives. It is soft. It is not the robustest of steels. And I'm thinking... Cold Steel is coming out with a brand new line of knives. I, I feel like it should be in a in a in a jazzed. No, that's not the term. It should be in a more legit steel. I don't know. I don't want a big slab of soft steel in a supposedly hard use knife. Now I get it. You got to have these. Uh, you got to have knives across a number of budgets. They have. Uh, Cold Steel is making a lot of fixed blade knives that are expensive in 3V steel, uh, really excellent high impact uh, outdoors knife steels and, and tactical fixed blade knife steels. And you have to have something in the more affordable realm. But I'll have you know, this Razor Tech line, it's expensive. That four inch one is 100 bucks. The five inch is 129 and the six and a half inch is 200 bucks. And I'm sorry, fixed blade knives. Uh, you price them down as far as I'm concerned because uh, they have less uh, machining. They have less uh, engineering that go into them. And something about these prices with those materials really rings false to me. Uh, I would love to talk to uh, the stick man uh, uh, on the show and talk to him about these knives and, and see, see what he's found in their testing. Maybe they've found some magic uh heat treat for 4116 that turns it into a a more um a less entry level steel uh, but i don't know i'm interested to find out uh that top the six and a half inch version is almost a quarter of an inch thick which is you know that's pretty respectable i'm sure it's a, a heavy duty i mean cold steel did marvelous things with os8 uh, they are known for heat treating their steel well but that was when Lynn Thompson was at the helm. Who knows? I know he's got something to do with them still, um, helping to sell maybe some of their other products, helping to design maybe some of the newer ones. But uh, I don't know. I, I want to find out more. I'm a little, I'm a little surprised by the materials, 
to price ratio on this one. Uh, but I want to believe in cold steel. So uh, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt until I can talk to someone. I'm going to try and have them on the show yet again. All right. Uh, next up, a guy we've had on the show, Gregor Grabarski, uh, better known as Kombu, uh, master designer of exotic looking folding knives from uh, Poland. He's been on the show, by the by. He's got a bunch of new Best Tech collaborations. And this uh, new one is pretty interesting because uh We'll get to the end. There's a little bit of foreshadowing in this in this here story. So the Costa came out a couple of years ago uh, in titanium with this really nice uh, upswept bellied worn cliff is what I'm calling it or or aggressively pointed cleaver. I don't know what you want to call it, but very nicely shaped uh, blade with uh, it looks sort of like a Chinese Dao sword to me or a war sword. I mean, um, and it's got the typical kombu swoopy lined handle with uh, very melt in your hand ergonomics. Well, they're coming out with a budget version of that. And I I shouldn't call it budget. It, it's a lighter uh, in terms of cost and uh, materials version. It's called the Costa BL. And it's going to come out with the same 3.46 inch blade, but it'll be instead of M390, it'll be 154 cm and instead of a um a titanium frame lock it will be a G10 liner lock so just taking that same beautiful profile and scaling it down in terms of materials and making it wider uh more available across a broader spectrum of knife budgets uh Kambu is a designer who works exclusively with Best Tech and a lot of his designs, which are more expensive to make because of the lines and the milling, and uh, there are a lot of details in his designs. Uh, well, they're starting to um, introduce more of his designs uh, in budget lines. And now this is a uh, a little bit of foreshadowing to something I'm going to show you in the in the state of the collection. So I'm I'm really excited about this Costa, and I'm excited about some even more budget versions coming out uh, of this same type of design from Kombu and Best Tech. Uh, so if you like that sort of pointed bellied cleaver type thing, um, but you don't even want to spend Costa BL money and get 154 CM, uh, there will be other options. Dun -dun. Foreshadowing. Uh, so you can check that out uh, coming up right here on the Knife Junkie podcast in the state of the collection. We're also going to take a look at the Blades of Spring Break. The Blades of Spring Break. These are the ones I brought on our trip. I, I uh, traveled with a different uh, knife philosophy this time, and uh, I'll tell you all about it coming up right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Have a knife you want featured or reviewed? Call the Knife Junkies 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us know. So right before we went away... Um, I had the honor of receiving a package from Lefty EDC. Uh, Kevin Lefty EDC sent me his knife, uh, a prototype of his knife, the Devo Knives Stout. And this is a collaboration between Kevin, uh, Kevin Johnson, Lefty EDC, and Colin of CM Knife Designs. And it is a really cool, really well-made bolster lock. Uh, sheep's foot edc I, i'm i'm gonna call it almost a hard use edc knife excuse the uh excuse the terminology but that's what it is and and also excuse the messy blade uh i did use this uh in a review video that i just posted uh, this past weekend and uh, i forgot to clean it off i'm not trying to show off oh look i used this knife uh but i did and it worked fantastically so it's a 20 CV blade here, hollow ground with a swedge. It's that sheep's foot uh, blade style. It's got a very gradual curving uh, cutting edge and a swedge. And that swedge really adds to the puncturing nature of the tip. Because if you look at it, like most sheep's foot, it has a pretty rounded off tip. But that uh, swedge comes all the way to the tip. And so that makes it at the very tip more like a diamond cross section. So it will penetrate easier. As you 
can, as you may be able to see up here on the swale, on the spine of the blade, there is a nice swale cut out for your thumb. Uh, if you're up forward in this 50-50 choil, in the forward grip, it's very comfortable. It's crowned so nicely. This whole, everything here is sort of rounded off. Uh, everything except this little tiny point right here. And this is something they're addressing in the production version. Uh, as is the hollow grind. This is a very nice hollow grind. It, it performed beautifully in my on-screen testing in that video. And as did that edge. It's a super amazing keen mirror edge. And it just glided through material very, very easily. Uh, however, they're going to make the, the hollow grind even deeper on the production version. That's another one of the little tweaks. Very nice branding. Devo knives. I like it, Devo. My wife uh, calls me a Devo from time to time when I'm being a diva. Um, there it is, uh, DK right there in the pivot. That's a an integral bolster on that titanium liner and a bolster lock. I just love bolster locks. I'm a new, I'm a convert. I just love them because you don't have to deal with putting pressure you don't have to deal with worrying about putting pressure on that lock bar when you're opening it, even incl to include slow rolling. I find a uh, slow rolling open a knife, especially in right hand, uh, with a standard traditional liner lock, or I mean um, frame lock, can be troublesome because I find my hand landing on the lock bar, but with the bolster lock, you just don't get it. You don't get that issue. Um, nice bent uh, wire clip here. Deep carry, very utilitarian. I like it because you're not going to scratch other stuff up and you're not going to scratch the clip up. Uh, these sort of rounded clips are much more kind to your steering wheel if you're getting in and out of your car a lot or even if you scratch up against the paint. I just find that these are, you know, a, a generally kinder on surfaces so that's nice and it flips over to the other side really nice uh micarta on there so very very happy to have this thank you guys for loaning this to me i'm gonna have uh, lefty on the show shortly and we're gonna talk all about it that's the stout from devo knives uh next up I also put a usage video of this one up and a review video this is the or a close-up i should call it this is the off-grid knives Ridgeback. The Ridgeback here, very nice sheath as usual from off-grid knives. They put their logo there. Uh, this is a um, outdoors knife for sure. It's got a Scandi grind. Very, very, very sharp. This is in 14C28N. An interesting choice for a camp knife. Uh, I did take it out and slam it into a, a sapling it it laid the sapling out in three swipes i needed that sapling for something else so um you pita people don't get on my case You're like that's not the pita's that that's not so 14 c 28 n like i said unusual choice for this kind of knife uh however um scandy ground this is more of a bushcraft knife for you know carving and feather sticking and um and uh, you don't think of it so much as a chopper, uh, but it performed wonderfully. I've already uh, uh, it it did get a little a little bit of uh, not dings, but I could feel just a tiny bit. I hit something hard, and so I I uh, took a ceramic rod to it and was a little imprecise. You can see across the scanty edge there, but got it back to truce. Dropped it up. This thing, I love this knife. And incidentally, my dad just bought one before I even mentioned I was going to be receiving this one. Uh, my dad just saw it. He likes off-grid knives, and he was lurking on their on their website and picked one up for himself, told me about it. But he, I doubt he got this one because this is a special edition. This is a special edition, Dad. This is a black and blue-gray micarta handle. So sumptuously uh, contoured. It feels great in hand. Just as, just, overall, this thing feels awesome. It feels a bit in hand like an SE knife, um, which is a compliment. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really psyched about this thing. The uh, coating on that 14C28N is nice and smooth. It's not like the black traction coating on the Topps knife, which kind of wears smooth after use. It, this is smooth uh, from go. So 
dig this knife comes with a dangler on the sheath uh that can come off and you can use different um great fit and you can use different uh, uh belt attachments next up a gift from best tech uh, they sent this to me uh, with some other knives to check out and uh offered that i keep this and i accepted the offer <laughs> this was uh this was featured on this show uh, about six months ago this is the eye of Ra, maybe a little bit more uh the eye of Ra from best tech this is an in-house design and just a cool little upswept persian it's it's not an upswept but it's a straight backed persian i'm gonna call it because that belly is upswept and it comes to a very acute point with a really nice swedge i mean this is a wicked puncturing blade and slashing blade but it doesn't it's not upswept in that it doesn't rise above the spine uh, which is what i prefer excellent excellent action uh, on the deployment and uh, nice return to the handle uh, as is implicated or indicated by the name uh, it's got this cut out here that's not just for lightening uh, the blade or for spinning it in your hand with ease it is also part of the eye of Ra um, motif. So um, that's the eye part. Uh, you've got nice, proud steel liners crowned off, very comfortable and colored blue in this case. Very cool little blade from, from the people over at Best Tech. They are, uh, it's three and a half inch blade. They are some of my favorite OEMs right now. Uh, every uh, off grid knives is having their knives made by Best Tech. A number of, uh, let's see, Vero was having it made by having their stuff made by Best Tech. Just outstanding quality, really cool designs coming from in house and working with great designers uh, like, well, for instance, Kombu. Here's something from Kombu, something that they sent me. Uh, to to show off, I'm going to be talking to uh, Gregor's again shortly about his new designs and the knives coming out. This is the Ornetta. Now, this was out originally in um, titanium frame lock form. And here you can get it in this beautiful G10. Uh, in this case, blue and black G10 contoured and milled. This is some of that milling I was talking about before. Um, on the uh, uh, milling on the handle here, and it is uh, really exquisitely sort of uh, sculpted and designed, and you get this now in a G10 form instead of titanium, and you still get that nice uh, milled titanium pocket clip, just a stylish, stylish knife. That's N690. Um, a, st uh, a steel often used um, often used in Italy and in uh, some of these more budget uh, Chinese uh, knives. And I just think that this thing has a really, really cool look and feel the feel, the ergonomics of this. Oh, it's, it just melts into your hand. I love uh, Kombu's designs. And this is the first of the Ornetta that I've held. And I really, really like it's got a nice choke forward point with that. Uh, with that choil and just a super smooth, super cool and largish knife. That's a 3.6 inch blade. So not too big, but uh, kind of in that mid EDC range. All right. Last up here is the. Uh, I, I, I had a, <laughs> put a little foreshadowing. This is called the Cubis before uh, when I was talking about the Calsa, the Casa by Kombu, that sort of uh, sweeping. Um, cleavery pointed cleavery style knife well this is this is the one that's even further down uh and more uh, budget friendly than that and this is from d2 this is the cubis d2 this beautiful aquamarine micarta very very high quality canvas micarta here really nice shape you've got a point you've got that cleavery style blade it's kind of like a straight razor too you have this forward choke up point and just ridiculously smooth action. Look at that. It just falls. I mean, you better get your thumb out of the way here. Um, incredible action on this. I have not seen this listed anywhere. I got to find out um, 
from the gentleman who sent this to me from Best Tech. I got to find out what the schedule is for um, releasing this. Again, I said, I'm not sure if I said this is a D2 blade. I just am in love with that color, my card. So we'll we'll see more about the Cubis uh, shortly. I'll be doing videos and also talking with Kombu here shortly. Uh, before I had the razor back out and I was talking about it, and I always fail to mention, uh, but I feel it important to mention, that I have an affiliate link with off-grid knives. Uh, I've been offered affiliate links with other companies um, that I've given uh, positive, strong reviews, um, but I, I've i said no for one reason or another. But off-grid knives, uh, I love them so much, and I have a collection of them, and I just, I think everything they do is pretty cool. Almost everything they do. You can't have every, you can't, can't be perfect. Uh, but I do have an affiliate link, so if you like this knife or any of the other off-grid knives you've seen me talk about here, uh, we do have an affiliate link. It's thenifejunkie.com slash off-grid, and it will, uh, that's the pretty link. It'll take you to, uh, you know, the, the website, and if you buy something from them, uh, we get a tiny little commission. So eh, if you want to, do it. Uh, you'll get a little, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to help support the show, and you'll get a sweet knife out of it. All right, so the blades of spring break why am i saying it like that you ask well i don't know it reminds me of those videos the babes of spring break uh well we had spring break we took a trip uh down south and uh i took knives with me as usual and of course not just one i usually bring this here or i'll show it to you my knife roll i got this last year uh from attention to detail mercantile software that's a stacia over there uh this thing is my knife roll and brought this with me. Excuse me. I keep sniffling. You know, like I said, uh, we all came back sort of sick. Who knows? Um, but uh, you'll have to excuse me. Um, okay. So my idea here uh, with, with what I brought on this, uh, on this here knife journey, I'm going to get this out of the way. It's sort of uh, shaken up the camera a little bit. Uh, but the whole idea here was, of course, I'm going to bring the SOCOM Elite. So I'll bring this out first uh, because that is my road trip knife officially. Um, so I brought this with me. But aside from this, I was thinking um, I have I've had a lot of cool knives come in or that I've purchased that are more on the more budget side and really capable that I don't carry as much because when I'm at home and I'm around my fancy knives, I tend to drift towards those. Uh, but on the road, maybe I don't want so many fancy knives because if I lose them, uh, that would be really bad. And um, so I decided besides the SOCOM Elite and maybe one other folder, I was going to I was going to stay sort of budget. So just to begin with the SOCOM Elite here, I've shown this off a million times, but I do love this. And now that I have the Bravo, I've been my whole love for Microtech has been reinvigorated and i want more of these elites i'd love to have a small one they make they used to make small versions of this i think that'd be cool uh so this knife is like i mentioned before a little more balanced right in the center or blade heavy eh, it's it's more right in the center right where a fighting knife should be but since there's no clip at the end to sort of more my hand in there uh it's it it took a while to get used to this having the clip there uh, but I am. Why is this my road trip knife? Because it was the first knife I ever had with a glass breaker and it sort of just sunk in. That's my road trip knife. So I do love that knife, the SOCOM Elite. And um, I picked that up and I just intuitively grabbed the SOCOM Bravo. Love that thing. OK, so next up. I carried with that on the first day, I do remember the Hadros from Civivi. Um you know, my philosophy, it's sort of like you got to have different blade shapes if you're carrying multiple blades. So this is sort of the um, kind, almost the opposite of that Tonto blade. It's just a straight uh, pointy Warncliffe. Uh, this is the knife I did bring out when I needed a knife. This was to cut food and it was I cut it in the car. And as I was cutting it, I was thinking, hmm, maybe something with a round tip would have been better for cutting food in the car. Uh, because that point could easily go through this Wendy's carton sitting on my lap. So uh, I, I did decide uh, that maybe that was the wrong choice uh, for the intended purpose. But I do love the Civivi Hadros. This is a great, great knife. This one's in 14C. 
28N and really nice micarta, almost polished, very smooth micarta. And just a small knife, great for EDC. And also if you flip it around and use it like this, it'd be a pretty good EDC as tactical knife. I featured that here on one of the shows not too long ago. Okay, so the next full uh, full size right pocket folder that I carried that I brought on the more expensive side is this. And now I'm thinking, and, and, and this got a lot of carry too. Uh, this is the Emerson Sachs, my beloved Emerson Sachs with uh, a, a MXG gear clip on it. That's the only way to carry this knife, I believe, because he placed the clip as he does frequently audaciously low. I know that's so you have more purchase on the knife when you remove it in the knife fight. But uh, so anyway, I just got the smaller uh, MXG gear clip and put it on there. And I really like how it looks, how it carries and how it feels in hand. Uh, and I said, I'm starting to think I'm starting to think I need to get wooden handles made by vantage point on this. Tom Engelson does great um, aftermarket scales for Emerson knives, and he's done a few in desert ironwood that just look amazing. Uh, so maybe this sax has earned that. I love this knife. I carry this. I take this is probably my most carried Emerson. And uh, so this was with me on the trip and got a lot of carry um, when not in one of the fun parks. Um, with it, this got carried. And Again, you can see it's because of the contrast in blade shapes. This is probably what I should have had whilst cutting uh, the burgers I was talking about. But this is the three and a quarter inch Pelican Mini from Kaiser. And another one of my favorite designers, this time from Paris, uh, from France, and that is K Max Rom. Uh, this is my small K Max Rom sub collection of four knives. Uh, I don't know. This is really. Uh, shot to the top i love this knife first of all kaiser just kills it all the time they're great i love kaiser and um this uh super smooth thumb stud knife just mm, something about it everything about it i love uh the the detent on it is pretty stout and uh, at first it took a little breaking in but it's almost hard to not get it to fully engage and because it's a liner lock easy slow roll so great knife great knife great utility and great cutting great slicing great shape great look and the ergonomics are fantastic and this is one of those uh, little big knives in my in my opinion three and a quarter is a little small for me but this is uh this acts like a big knife S also excellent um Canvas micarta, which has begun to take on a patina, which I love. Next up, also a K Max ROM design, this time produced by Concept. Uh, this knife has gotten a lot of press by me recently. The Preta 2. Preta 2 means ready for anything in French. And this knife is indeed ready for anything. This is the Canvas micarta version and a liner lock. I have the titanium frame lock version in the Tanto, bl Tanto blade shape. This one, of course, the double peak Bowie. I love the double peak Bowie, um, like the Mac V SOG, the classic Mac V SOG design. This thing is a great cutter with 154 CM blade steel and very, very nice uh, edge geometry. Um, like the Tanto, which is an S35 EN. It's just a great, great, this is great for cutting boxes. I know it looks a little more high speed than that. Like you might want to use it for a, for that knife fight uh, that you got um, paid to enter. Uh, but it is really an EDC knife at uh, three and 3.6 inches. And uh, man, just a great cutter and slicer. I've used this thing uh, quite a bit more than the titanium. Actually, I find that the, blade uh that the thumb studs are much easier to use uh, due to the liner lock nature of it of course you've got the flipper and then you also have that uh, nice fuller that you can spidey flick it open with um this has a uh, very i don't want to call it polished but kind of kind of polished or hard micarta kind of like this one 
the Hadros, whereas this feels softer and more absorbent. Uh, but I've been using this one so much, it's starting to take on a patina where my fingers wrap around. Uh, so I do like that. Uh, carried this only one day, uh, but it got it it got overshadowed by this one, the Gerber Sedula. Yes, it was overshadowed by a Gerber. And this one I took with me because Gerber recently sent this to me. I did a very positive review and review video and decided uh, they were someone who offered me that uh, affiliate link. And I, I, I turned it down because I want people to know that I actually really think that this Gerber is awesome. And I really do think uh, that it's worth the money if you, uh, because it's so well-designed and well-produced. Uh, it, it might not win any beauty contests here, but that's S30V. It's uh, a really well-ground, uh, real, really well-beveled blade. And then the uh, cutting edge is, is pretty perfect on both sides. Uh, it has an excellent bar lock or axis style lock and uh, really uh, kind of heavy GRN handles without weight reduction. So uh, though it is a plastic handle, it still feels weighty due to the full liners and the density of the FRN they use here. Uh, very good grip, excellent pocket clip with um, ramping and flat screws and perfectly centered blade. I, I got to say, this is a Gerber that exceeds expectations by, uh, 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 you know, 200%. And it makes me happy because I had a soft spot in my heart always for Gerber due to a knife my dad had back in the 70s. And I, I want to see them like everyone else, every other American business. I want to see them do well. And this one is actually made in America. And maybe that's why the quality is so high on this one. Uh, so just an excellent, excellent knife. And I wanted to bring it on the trip and use it a lot. And I did use it a lot that that cut a lot of pancakes. Again, that cut uh, biscuits, all, all sorts of things that I don't want well, hamburgers. You know, we ate like, uh, I don't know, we ate a lot of fast food type stuff. And this did a lot of that kind of work for sure. I didn't have much else to, to do with knives while we were on the trip, but this thing I've used it a lot and I've got, I, I want to see this upward trajectory for Gerber. So the Gerber Sedulo was uh, a big one on this trip. Also, um, a big one on the trip was, you know, I had a lot, uh, had a lot of opportunity when not in the fun park to switch knives up. This one got a lot of use, especially on the train. And uh, because I was worried, I didn't know what the security might be on the train. So I packed everything else up, stuck it in the car. The car goes on the back of the train. I go in the front of the train with the family. And uh, this is what I brought with me. Uh, this highly, highly capable Kubi Flash. Just a luxury knife at 40 bucks, I got to say. Really well designed, really well executed, excellent blade shape excellent blade geometry a, a brilliant cutter it's got a point right down center line with the with the pocket clip and the pivot so it's right where you want it but also has a handle that puts the tip where you want it for utility cuts and pull cuts and draw cuts that kind of thing so this thing is an all-arounder if you like a 3.75 inch blade and i do i love the big knives uh, and you want something that's equally capable as a utility knife or as a last ditch defense folder man for 40 bucks the quality of this i'd say you couldn't go wrong with this unless you don't like the shape or the look um also in reverse grip incidentally since i mentioned self-defense a great handle shape for capping the pommel uh, with the thumb just an awesome knife i i loved carrying this i have one gripe with it and that one oh excellent uh access to the lock bar something jared neve has really opened my eyes to in terms of importance and also it's a nitpick uh but the clip is is decent because it's a wrap over it's a fold over deep carry pocket clip uh the problem here uh it's recessed screws that's good the problem here is the clearance it's very tight right here um kind of wish that arc was a little broader it it did not fit well into any pants except the most worn down jeans like where the seam is gone 
slipped in and out of that. But that last little bit, I'd have to lip, lift the clip up here uh, by the ramp just to get it over uh, thick seams of jeans. So that's the one uh, one gripe with this knife. But that's like, you know, it's a Seinfeld type gripe. She had man hands or he's a low talker, that kind of thing. All right. Three fixed blade knives I brought with me. First, uh, this one rode around in my pocket uh, when we weren't at the fun park. And uh, this is the um, Station 9. I'm sorry, it just reminded me of my Bastinelli Diagnostic. Another little fixed blade knife that I left with but did not return with. Um, <laughs> I know. I shed a tear for my first world problem. Uh, this is the Station 9 number four. Number four, this is a lapel dagger. Um, OSS style or uh, or SOE style lapel dagger. Except it's updated. You can see that's a Kydex sheath. Instead of a little leather sheath that gets sewn in under your uh, jacket lapel or into the inside of your pocket so it doesn't print, this is Kydex. And that's what this is for. It's a tiny little last ditch, double-edged, and those edges are damn sharp. Um, that's... Uh, uh, Oh, VG10 blade steel. And uh, it's a little tiny dagger. And you see it's got these little, uh, it's got this little pasture of jimping here that you're, that's very sharp, that really grip into your fingers. You can hold this, pinch this between your fingers and repeatedly stab thick cardboard. And how do I know that? Because I have plenty of times because um, it's fun. Uh, but also this is a great little knife to keep in your pocket, especially you put a little, a gutted paracord fob on there with a loop and you can do uh have all sorts of different hand holds with this thing uh, let me let me see if i can demonstrate put my middle finger through this loop of course this is something you'd have set up before you needed it because it doesn't not so easily done quickly but have it on there walk around casually like that and then flip it out like this and you've got a knife right there and then you also have that cord to help it keep stable so it's stable this way and forward to back and there are different ways to hold it so you can punch with it if you look at the uh at the instagram page for station nine you can see the different hand holds they have it's pretty cool i gotta say i really like station nine i like their um their raison d'etre raison d'etre they're using um they're producing products i think they have nine at this point all based on weapons of the French resistance and other uh, and other World War II um, units. Uh, for instance, the uh, the knuckles, uh, which are not here with me, uh, that I have are based on the knuckles that were issued to Austro-Hungarian troops uh, during World War One and and after. And this knife is based on resistance stuff, uh, uh, intelligence spy kit. Uh, they have a number of different knives. One knife that they have called the Partisan is pretty cool. It's it's a uh, it's a fixed blade knife. It looks like an altered chef's knife, uh, altered for combat with a swedge, and um, and that's basically what it's based on. Um, they were not manufacturing uh, uh, specialized military knives for resistance people. They were taking their own kitchen knives and and. Uh, altering them to to be better fighting knives and french french uh, chef's knives are are very um similar to some of the french fighting knives where the actual uh blade acts as the finger guard so that your hand doesn't move forward on that blade you can see that style a lot in fred perrin's designs um that that sort of integral blade slash guard so Station 9, very, very cool operation. Check them out on Instagram. It's Station, capital I, capital X, Roman numeral 9. All right, uh, this is the one that I carried on me only on the drive down there, uh, and I didn't carry it any other time. This is my Topps knife, but it also sat next to me uh, on the bedside stand. Uh, this is the Topps knives uh, Rapid Strike. Love this knife, and haven't carried it too much recently, because I've gotten all these uh, custom fixed blade uh, EDC knives and those have sort of eclipsed this, but I thought uh, this is replaceable. I wouldn't want to have to buy a new one and I wouldn't want to lose it, 
but if I had to, I could replace it. Whereas my custom ones are, are not replaceable. I might be able to have the maker remake them, but it's a different sort of thing. This is uh, the double-edged version. You can get this single-edged uh, if you are faint of heart, if you are rabbit-hearted. Uh, but I <laughs> love double-edged everything if it's an option. And uh, so there it is, double-edged. Such a great knife. 154 cm blade steel. Uh, one of my favorite stainless steels and a great choice for this uh, for a tactical knife. Now, Topps Knives uses one uh, uses a 1095 and 1075 sometimes, almost exclusively those two uh, carbon steels. But for their stainless steel needs, they go to 154, and that's great. Uh, and that's always on these sort of self defense knives that they figure are going to ride close to the to the person, him or herself, and. Uh, you know, when you carry a knife like this close to your your body, your body just even if you're not sweating the off gassing of your inner juices, <laughs> I can hear my dad, who who's a, a physician, laughing. But the off gassing of your inner juices will make 1095 rust. So uh, uh, 154 cm is a great blade steel for taking a great edge, staying sharp sharpening it it takes it's easily sharpened holds its edge you know all, all of those great qualities and is uh pretty darn uh, rust resistance rust resistant this one i altered i i put those grooves in on both sides of the handle those four grooves for extra added grip because i removed a bit of the pommel the pommel comes to a diamond tipped a glass breaker, which is nicely executed, but the wrong thing for this blade, this knife, if you ask me. This is a self-defense knife and should have some sort of pommel that allows you to cap uh, with your thumb. And so I made one for myself. I also rounded it off, made it short so that it's uh, more comfortable for in the waistband carry. Love that thing. Last up, uh, uh, last knife of... Uh, of the group oh i'll be darned okay well i left the very last item somewhere else so we won't get to that but the last knife of the carry was this this is this is my large travel knife these days this is um taken the place of uh, my original large travel knife was the cold steel master tanto for years and years and then it became the uh, super bowie uh, super bowie by sog and then this eclipsed that uh, years back. Uh, this is the Prather War Bowie by Topps. Uh, this is that 1095 blade steel with the black traction coating. Just a beast of a knife. Beautiful knife. I love that long swedge. The only thing that would make it better was if that was fully sharpened. <laughs> uh, but I love that long swedge. Uh, graceful shape. Wonderful for piercing and puncturing but you do have a lot of beef for chopping too. And that's what that big, long uh, clip point gives you. 154, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a 1095 blade steel. You got uh, canvas micarta with their mountain traction pattern there and then the red liners. And then this is what I was talking before about the integral blade guard uh, with the French, uh, the similarity between the French fighting knives and the French cooking knives is this right here. This uh, You don't need to add a blade guard because the blade is broad enough that it comes down below the handle and acts as its own guard on the thrust. Um, so just a wonderful knife. I love that coffin-shaped handle. Uh, as it widens out towards the back, it really you know grips your hand uh, for a centrifugal force uh, on the swing and makes it a great chopper as well as thruster and cutter and everything else. So uh, last up, in a in a in a absent-minded turn, I was carrying it around last night and left it in my bedroom. But I also had the Wingard wearables back ripper, and if you know anything about that, it's a really cool, really light, uh, really easy to travel with tomahawk. And um, I I carry it around the house a lot, as you can tell, because it's not here. And um, uh, it would be an excellent, excellent self-defense weapon if you ever needed some sort of edged implement. So I brought that along. And my wife uh, accidentally opened my dresser drawer in the hotel, and she's like, did you bring a tomahawk? 
And then one of my daughters who was laying on bed reading was like, of course he did. <laughs> and, and so and I was like, yeah, of course I did. You know, who doesn't travel without some form of acts with them? You know, uh, that that's something that runs in the family. But that's a different story for a different time. All right. So those are the those are the blades of spring break, ladies and gentlemen. I had the SOCOM elite. I had the Hadros, the Sax, the mini Pelican or Pe Pelican mini, the Preta 2, the Sedulo, the Flash, the number four, the Rapid Strike and the Tops. Prather War Bowie, and then add in your mind's eye the Wingard Wearables Back Ripper. And that was my armory, my traveling armory. Uh, not, not to include all the other little incidental knives like what was on my keys and the Swiss Army knife and this and that. That's what I brought. So uh, if you travel and you have travel knives or a traveling knife philosophy, you got to let me know. Uh, be sure to call the listener line 724 466 4487 or leave a comment down below and let me know. This is what I consider food for thought. Okay, until next time, I'm Bob DeMarco uh, saying for Jim working his magic back there behind the switcher, please do not take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.